Welcome to Electron Line. Now, based on what we learned in the previous video, we're going to carry that just one step further. We're going to find the general way of calculating the amount of energy transferred in any completely elastic collision. So here we have the example where we had a single neutron with mass m colliding with a boron with, with uh, mass 10m. And in the previous video, we found that in this particular case, that about 33% of the energy was transferred from the neutron to the boron. Also from the previous video, we found that the final velocity of the boron in terms of the initial velocity of the, of the neutron had a ratio of 20 divided by 110. And the final velocity of the neutron compared to the initial velocity of the neutron had a ratio of 90 divided by 110. We found that in the previous video. And the amount of energy transferred can be calculated as follows. We can say that the original energy, which is one half mv initial squared of the neutron, will be equal to one half mv final squared of the neutron plus one half times 10 m v final squared of the boron. So now the question is, what is the size of this relative to the original energy? And in the general case, depending upon the different masses. What if the masses were different? What if it wasn't boron, but it was a different atom and maybe a different impact particle? Well, let's go ahead and figure that out. Let's take a look at this equation right here. V final of the neutron compared to V initial of the neutron. If you for, for a moment get rid of the zeros, we have 9 divided by 11, and you look at the masses, the 9 can be found by taking 10m minus 1m, that would be 9, and the 11 would be 10m plus m. So in essence, we see that v final can be written in terms of v initial via the ratio of, in this case, that would be um, big M minus little m divided by big M plus little m. Because this would be 10m minus m, which would be 9m, and this would be 10m plus m, which would be 11m, and the m's would cancel out, which means that this would be equal to 9 over 11 v initial, which is what we had as the ratio there. So that means that we can think, think of the relationship between the final velocity and the initial velocity of the impact particle in terms of the fraction of this particular ratio. Which means if we then plug that in here, we could say that one half mv initial squared is equal to one half m times v final squared. And instead of v final squared, we're going to write uh, big M minus little m divided by big M plus little m quantity squared times v initial squared. And then here we have plus 1 over 2 m times 10 times v final squared. All right, now we're going to need something else there so that we can get this to be equal to one another. So the question is, what is this going to be equal to? We already know what this is equal to. And by the way, if we plug in those values, Let's see what we get. So that would be the fraction of the energy left after the collision. This is the total energy. This is the fraction of the energy. So what is m minus m divided by m plus m squared? So if we uh, check that, so we're going to do a check. And we can see that uh, m minus little m divided by m plus little m quantity squared is the same as 10m minus m divided by 10m plus m quantity squared, which is equal to 9m divided by 11m quantity squared. And of course, the m's cancel out, which is 9 over 11 squared. And if we take 9 divided by 11, and we square that, oh, let me try again, 9 divided by 11, and then we square that, we get, well, let's try one more time, 9 divided by 11, and we square that, we get, well, 67%. And now if we add that to, if we add that to the 33% we found the last time, that would be 100% of the original energy. So this is the energy that the neutron keeps, and the other 33% is then given off to the uh, boron atom. So now we need to find the general expression of the boron atom. 
What needs to go in here? What do we need to replace? Whoa, take that back. That's not exactly what we want. But what we want to do here is instead, we want to rewrite this as plus 1 half m v initial squared. And something needs to go in here in such a way that when we add it to this, 1 half m times m minus m over m plus m squared v initial squared. When that adds up to the whole thing, which would be 1 half m times the ratio of, well, that would be big M plus M divided by big M plus M squared V initial squared. In other words, this would be 1 half M V initial squared times this ratio, which would be equal to 1. So this plus this would give us this. Hmm. So what goes in here to, to add that to this to give us that? Now, let me show you how we can do that. So if we multiply this out, we get m squared plus 2mm plus little m squared divided by m plus m quantity squared. We don't have to multiply out the denominator. That has to equal, when we multiply this out, we get m squared minus 2 little m big m plus little m squared divided by m plus m quantity squared plus something over m plus little m quantity squared, but what goes in the numerator? Well, notice, what do I need to add to this in order to get this? And then what comes to minus? Ah, how about if I add a plus 4 little m big M? Because if I do that, then minus 2 m big M plus 4 little m big M together gives me a positive 2 m big M, which is equal to this, and therefore this plus this equals this ratio, which is equal to 1. Which means that the fraction of the energy that is converted to the larger atom is equal to this quantity right here. So that means that the kinetic energy final for the boron is equal to 1 half mv initial squared, that's the initial energy of the neutron, times the ratio of 4 little m big M over big M plus little m quantity squared. Notice, if I now calculate that fraction, what do I get? And so this is equal to uh, 4 times m times 10m divided by m plus big M, that would be uh, m squared, that would be um, 10m squared plus 2 times the product would be 2m times 10m times or plus plus that would be m squared like this. Notice all the m squareds cancel out because we have m times m in the numerator. We have an m squared, an m squared, an m squared. All the m squareds cancel out, which leaves me with in the numerator 40. And in the denominator, I end up with 121. And let's see what that is equal to. What is 40 divided by 121? And you've guessed it. It is 33%. So ultimately, what can we say? That the fraction of the energy that is kept by the impact particle can be calculated by this quantity right here. And the fraction of energy that is lost by the uh, that is lost by the impact particle given to the particles that is impacted would be equal to this. So let's write those two equations down. So percent of the energy kept is going to be equal to this. It's going to be the big M minus little m divided by big M plus little m quantity squared. So that's the energy kept, energy kept by the impact particle. And then the energy transferred, that would be calculated by 4 little m big M divided by the quantity uh, big M plus little m squared. That is equal to the energy transferred to the big particle. Oop, like this. And so the neutron in general 
keeps this amount of energy and the boron will receive that amount of energy from the neutron, the impact particle. So this is the particle that hits the big particle, this is the big particle, and this is how we calculate the fraction of the energy that's kept by the initial particle and the fraction of the energy that's transferred to the big particle, and that is how that's done.